Today's video is gonna be sponsored by PCB Way. Let's build a battery. As you know, power cells are some of the most popular lithium battery cells. And there's a good reason for that as they are some of the smallest, lightest cells available. But they have one particular problem. And that is that they don't have terminals. Instead of terminals, they have a cell tap, which is just a flat piece of metal sticking out of one side of the cell. And to further complicate things, one of those cell taps is made out of, usually made out of aluminum, while the other one is made out of copper. To join these cells in uh, multi-cell packs, what you usually have to do is you need to solder those cell taps together. But that works really well for medium to small cells while it's really, really hard to do that on the larger cells. So the larger cells are usually bonded together using a very powerful laser that welds the tabs together, either to each other or another plate called a current collector. But let's be honest, not many of us can afford this very expensive and exotic laser welder. So this is the reason why I might be challenging to use power cells in your DIY projects. But there is an alternative, and that is to mechanically uh, bond together the, the tabs with fasteners. The DIY world is full of examples of people that are successfully built battery packs using screws, rivets, or some other kind of fastener to, to connect the cell tabs together and then create packs doing that way. With that in mind, today's project is to make an easy way to use PCBs to make bus bars for the LG JP3 cells that are available at Jack 35. These cells are very compelling because they are very, very powerful. They give up to 500 amps for two minutes. And right now they're very affordable as they come off a failed government project. So with that in mind, let's get into this project and let me show you how I designed this PCB board to serve as a bus bar for these pouch cells. Okay, so the design is pretty simple. It's just a flat plate that is gonna have slits for the bus bars for the uh, cell taps to poke through. Here you go, so it's just a board and it has slits right here. And then we have exposed copper here, just, just to help the, get the electrons from one cell tap to the next cell tap, right? So the holes here are to be able to guide uh, self tapping screws. This is the simplest way that you that we can do that right there are four boards in this design and the reason for that is because it it makes it so what you want to do is you want to sandwich the two tabs together and in order to do that efficiently well you put a board in the back and then you put a board on the top and then you use a screw to squeeze to sandwich those both of those uh, boards together so the holes on the bottom board they're a little bit smaller than the holes on the top board and that's so that the screw only grabs on the bottom board and it doesn't grab on the top board, but then it just uses it to squeeze it, right? So basically two boards, uh, one on each side because the cells have tabs on both sides, right? And uh, battery minus starts here and it goes across and then it goes up to this side, right? And then from here it turns in and then from here it connects to the next one and it goes back and then it connects six axes back over here. And so these are the bottom boards right here, this one and this one, and then here are the top and boards. And you, when you get this design, you'll be able to break these boards into four pieces right here in the middle, and then you will be able to use these together. So pretty simple design, not much. Uh, there are these connectors here that I uh, drew so that you can put a little, uh, you can put a little connector, a little like, ring. No, so you can use like screw terminals in here and then you can connect either your balancer or you can connect a full-fledged BMS, which I'd recommend to do. And of course, this battery here is gonna be a 4S, which is about 14.8 volts in nominal. Um, this is useful uh, in a lot of cases to serve as, as a 12 volt battery. A lot of people in the car audio will use uh, 4S batteries in the NMC chemistry. And so this is perfect for that because this battery is very, very powerful. It can give you a lot of amps. Now, I know what you're saying. How is this possible to put so many amps through this little board in here? And the truth is that it's not. The amps are, will not be traveling through the board here because the cell tabs are will be touching each other. So that is how you conduct uh, electrons from one cell tab to the next and not through the board. This board here is just to help get everything together and stabilize it like 
physically and mechanically and also to serve uh to put a, a an easy to deal with connector here for the your bms um, as you will see in the build you will have to connect a cable or two wires to go from the backboards to the front boards and then you can then have all your cell taps right here uh the balance leads right and then just connect your uh balancer there so this is a simple design uh we'll upload this to pcb way and then you guys can download it now let's go build this battery okay so now that we have our board uh, this design uh requires you to break it apart there we go and then add the connectors so i've already done that so here are four boards uh with the connectors already put so here's the thing with this you only need the big connector on the positive and negative side of these boards because on this side all you're going to do is just connect these two to these two so that you can have all your connections on the one side and then you can easily connect the bms right so on the back end boards on where the one that has uh, c3 and c1 you only need the little one so maybe in like the later design we'll just erase that on the on the main file so that it doesn't get confused just to eliminate confusion but here we are this one goes on top of that one this one's gonna go on top of that so then after that all you need is four cells and some tape and then we need to put these cells this board right here this version of that is designed so that you can build these without having cell holders right so sometimes you want to build a battery and you want to have it as small as possible if you're building like an e-bike or a motorcycle or something you know the holders will add a lot of size and you know not so much weight but a lot of size and if you don't have that size if you're trying to make a battery pack and you know optimize it for 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 that to fit a, a particular you know size box or whatever then you might want to build without the holders and just uh, shrink wrap the whole thing and you know there's ways to protect it and stuff but these boards are for that right it's like naked cells you just tape them up and we're gonna do that right now okay so these cells here have a positive and a negative and they're marked on the thing but they're very very small so you have to pay attention it's very easily you can make a mistake so here what i've done is i put them all facing the same direction so all positives are here at the bottom and all negatives are at the top so now what you have to do is you have to take two and then flip them so now the positives on that side and then you put that in there right so then it's positive on that side and now this one's negative on that side and then you do the same thing with this one flip it um, so now you have positive, negative, positive, negative, and that is what you need when you're building a battery. So now that you have that lined up like this, and then we're going to use Captain Tape. Captain Tape, it's a really good battery making material. This is used by, this is developed by NASA. It's flame retardant, and this does not melt. Like it's got a really, really high temperature um, melting point, right? And so they use that. Yeah, I know some of the older uh, NASA projects, they're full of Captain Tape. So now you need to figure out this is the positive. You get these boards, the one that's got the positive, and you have to make sure these little tabs are straight. And the bottom board has slits cut through it, right? So there we go these ones on the center will fold in and these ones could fold out so now we we top this and we're going to use screws for that flip it around now we put the topper Okay, now that we have both sides installed, now we're going to connect the two-pin uh, connector just using regular wire from this side all the way to this side, the two-pin connector here, right? We have to pay attention to make sure that you connect, connect it the right way. Right, and the way you do it is you connect C1 to C1 on the other one and C3 to C3. Okay, so remember the way these connectors work, you got to back them out first and then you can... Um, 
attach the, the cable. There we go. Then we go to the other side. So that's what, what was that? C1. Then we repeat that with C3. Now be careful and not touch any other thing here. And then we just put Captain tape right there. Keep these so they don't come out. Now these are gonna be your pads, negative and positive. Uh, we're gonna install this next to see how the cells are balanced and then this is where you would install your BMS. And just like that, you got your own little balancer there. It tells you what the cells are doing. Okay, so there we go. Now you have a 4S 64 amp hour battery pack, right? You could use this for anything that can use 14.8 nominals. Uh, a lot of people are using 4S uh, in their like high performance electric uh, uh, audio systems, right? Because they, they can push the limits. This sitting at nominal, it's higher voltage than a regular 12 volt battery. And so you could use these cells because these cells are very, very powerful. They can do 500 amps uh, for two minutes, I think, continuous. Now, can this handle 500 amps? I guess we're gonna have to do some testing to see if this, right? And, and then how, what do you do with the, with, uh, as far as your terminals? As far as your terminals, how do you do this? Well, you can solder directly into these boards right here. Or I think what I'm gonna do is bake some plates that go in here and have like an L thing and then you can, so that we can screw them on here and then uh, use ring terminals so that you get a much secure connection there. Uh, there's some gonna be testings on just how much we can push these uh, PCBs here. Now, we're really not transmitting power through the PCB boards because the, the cell terminals, the cell tabs are touching each other, right? So right here, for example, these screws are going right through the cell terminal. You see the cell terminal is right there, the cell tab, and it's being sandwiched there. So these screws are touching directly the cell tab. So if we back them out, we put another plate in there and then you connect to that plate, you're going, you know, you're getting directly to the cell tabs. Uh, the same thing on this side, these cell tabs are laying one on top of the other one and then these uh, screws are just sandwiching them together, keeping them uh, mechanically attached together, right? So we're really not going through the boards. We're going cell tab to cell tab. And so, yeah, the testing, we need to do some testing to see just how much uh, resistance there will be in doing this. These are designed kind of to be welded, laser welded, right? That's how the original design of these. But I think a lot of people have successfully been doing mechanically uh, attaching these cells to tabs to systems like this, right? And so, that's why we built this system right here. And of course, this is just a 4S. If you need, uh, you know, 7S, for example, or 24 volts, or if you need, uh, what are the other ones? 10S for 36 volts, or if you need 14S for 48, or 20S for 72, uh, yeah, that you're gonna be able to do it just like this. Uh, I will have another version of this that uh, that is designed, just like this, the dimensions change a little bit, for people that want to do this, but want to use the holders that we have. These cells come in holders, and if you wanna use that to protect them and to like screw them and stuff and like, you know, install them in, a, in whatever application you wanna use, those are gonna be available and those are, I'm gonna make a video uh, next for that. But this is it. This is a quick, simple little PCB project to make PCB bus bars for these very, very, uh, Amazing cells, they're JP3s, they can do uh, 500 amps for two minutes, right? Uh, according to all the information that we're finding, we don't have the spec sheet for these, but independent testing has shown that these are very, very powerful uh, and they're very cheap. We're selling them on our website right now for $9.99. I think these are gonna start going up, right? Like just people that haven't found them yet and that's why we, we priced them so low but as more and more people find out and they start moving, we're gonna raise the price because these are these are too cheap. Like these these don't come out, like, you know, they don't come around often. And so if you're looking for an affordable battery that can put a lot of power, yeah, go to uh, jack35.com. 
All right, thank you for PCB Way for sponsoring another one of these videos. Go to the PCB Way link in the description of this video to, to find the, the project files and to find uh, the links to all the stuff that you need to build this little pack. All right, see you guys in the next video. Bye.